What is up, guys? Today we're going to be looking at a company called PassFab, um, which is a daughter company of Tenorshare, and their product, 4WinKey. I had a, an employee from Tenorshare PassFab contact me and ask me if I wanted to review their product, 4WinKey. I asked for a product key for 4WinKey, and they provided it, I tested it out, and I liked what I saw. So I agreed to make a video about it today. Now, PassFab also makes a lot of other products, so if you guys want me to look at any of the other ones, please let me know down in the comments. And a lot of these are products that you might think might be scam or janky or illegal even. Um, so having someone like me to test them out for you and then tell you what I think um, might be a pretty good idea. But today we're looking at 4WinKey and 4WinKey is their Microsoft Windows password recovery tool. Um, it can reset admin password, reset Microsoft password, it can create an admin account, it can create a guest account, it can do almost anything that you need it to do to reset a Windows password besides one thing, which I'll get into later. And that's actually how you can protect yourself from tools like this. Um, if we go to buy now, we can see that there are a couple different versions of this software. We have the standard professional enterprise and ultimate. Now these three are all the same, like basically entirely the same. This one does domain passwords, which is good. It makes sense to be enterprise. Professional works on server, so I guess that also makes sense. But standard not working on a USB flash drive, it's 2021, no one has CD drives. I, I don't know why that's not a part of the standard. Um, obviously, Ultimate does everything, which includes uh, everything I talked about, which is remove admin and guest local account user password, which is something that standard does as well but then reset admin guest local account user password and reset Microsoft account user password, delete local admin and guest account and create new local admin accounts. Those are all really powerful tools that the ultimate claims it can do. So today we're going to take a look at those and make sure that it can back up what it's saying. Um, we're not really going to look at domain accounts because I I do have a domain computer here, but I'm not going to try this on my work computer. I don't hate my employer that much. Uh, supported platforms, we're going to be using Windows 10, so I cannot say anything about Windows Server 8.187 Vista XP or 2000. If you're using any of these, please stop and please update to at least 7. Uh, and don't use 8 or 8.1, that's just garbage. Uh, we'll be using the default ISO. We'll look at uh, some different customized ISOs though, and then I'll be using a USB flash drive today because I do not have a CD reader in my desktop computer right now. So in order for me to get this, I have to get the free trial. And if you ever get a product key for this, you will have to use the free trial, download it, and then enter in your product key. Otherwise, click the buy now and then click which version you want and it'll ask you for billing information. Uh, also make sure that you are at passfab.com. There are other sites like 4winkey.com and passfab.something else. Um, I don't know if those sites are actually connected to passfab or if they are scam sites that are trying to uh, sucker in people like you and me of course so we're gonna click free trial it's a very quick download um click yes when it asks you and i've read and agreed and we're going to click install settings just to make sure it's not doing anything funky uh choose whatever you want to on the custom experience improvement plan i always uncheck these on almost every software i've ever done just because i don't know exactly what they're going to share we're gonna click install. I already have this installed, so it should recognize it, or it's just gonna write over it. So what this is installing is a installer. It's installing a program that will install 4WinKey onto a USB drive for you. 
So it's kind of like uh, Belena Etcher when we installed Raspberry Pi onto an SD card, or if you ever installed Linux or a uh, Microsoft update tool, it's basically the same thing. Once this is done, just make sure that you have a USB. I think it has to be 16 gigs or larger, which is about the normal size of modern day USBs. Um, don't quote me on that, eight gigs might work. And we're just gonna wait for this to finish. All right, so now that it is done, we're gonna click start. Gives us a cool little animation. We are gonna be using USB flash drive. I already have mine plugged in, but first I'm going to, I already have my product key logged in cause I already had it installed, um, but you would have to type in the email it's associated with. Uh, you do have to make an account and then the product key that you have. Um, when you buy it, I think you have to do the same thing. You still have to enter in the product key, uh, but don't quote me on that. I'm not actually sure what functionality the demo version has. I'm fairly certain it's probably just the standard uh, install, but just for a couple of days or weeks. So we're going to click next. The burning process will erase the drive. Yes. And we're gonna wait for the disk to burn. Once we burn the disk, we're going to restart the computer and then plug it into the computer that you need the password recovered from and make sure that you boot to the USB. Um, most computers have a boot menu where you can pick which device to boot from. Just make sure you're booting from the UEFI USB, mine's SanDisk Cruiser, um, and make sure you're not booting from either the C drive, which is probably an SSD, or Windows Boot Manager, because that will just take you straight to Windows. This does mean that you need access to either the boot menu or the BIOS on the computer that you will be recovering the Windows password from. So just make sure that you do have access to that. Uh, most computers have that accessible, but if you are in an enterprise environment or some other computers, they have a password on the BIOS and the boot menu is locked down to whoever has that password. So just keep that in mind. All right, so now that we are done, it does show us a little screen telling us what the boot key is for different types of devices. So if you're using any of these, just make a little mental note. Say, hey, I'm using an HP desktop. I'll be hitting F12. Uh, for me, I am using a Asus motherboard and that would be F8. Um, it also has laptop option for Apple computers, but I I don't think this works for Apple computers unless you bootcamp it. If you have a bootcamp Mac, I believe this will work. So keep that in mind. So next, it's telling us to go through the boot menu uh, and then select the device. And then it shows us what to do once we have that. So I'm gonna close this. Um, I'm going to let you guys know right now that on my user account, I'm using a Windows Hello pin. So that is the six digit numerical pin. Um, so I'm not using a password, uh, but I am using a Microsoft Windows account. So it's the cloud account and I have a password as another option of signing in. And that password is one of my personal passwords and it's like 16 digits long. I'm telling you guys this because I want you guys to know that I did not like set this up. I didn't like do whatever. So I will be changing the pin to a password. I will also be creating a admin account, a guest account, and I think that's about it. So let's reboot. So as soon as the computer starts to start up again, start just spamming that key, uh, either F12, F8, delete, or escape and you should be greeted by a boot menu. All right, so we can see on the screen, we have Windows Boot Manager, a bunch of other drives, and then we have UEFI SanDisk Partition 1. So we're gonna be doing that. It's gonna load the files.
coincidentally, this does look like a Windows installer, uh, just with the loading bar and the loading files, and then obviously with the Windows logo right there. That is not Windows loading up, that is the 4Win key software loading itself. All right, so now it has us select the Windows system. I only have one install of Windows, so this is the one. And then we have a couple options. So we can look at some different accounts. We see that we have our main Microsoft account. And it we know it's a Microsoft account because it has a little Y under the Microsoft account logo and it is an admin. All right, so I'm select my account and then I'm going to reset the account password. Um, and then I'm going to change it to something that it obviously wasn't. So we're going to change it to uh, password. and you can see I'm changing it and hit reset. And after resetting it, we do have to reboot. So we get this little message saying, congratulations, the change about the Windows account has become effective. And we just have to wait for Windows to continue to boot up. Click OK, and then on password, we're going to type in password, and password works. So I understand that this can be faked very easily, so I'm going to restart again, and you guys, you guys know, here, I'll, I'll sign out. There are no other accounts. Usually if there would be another account, there would be one on this left side over here. Uh, there is not. So I'm going to restart, and in 4WinKey, I'm going to create a local admin account. All right, so same thing. We're going to go down to SanDisk, partition 1. You can also just click on the SanDisk down here. I just like doing the first one. It's going to do the same thing. It's going to load the files. It's going to fake boot into Windows. And then we're going to create a local admin. All right, so again, choose which Windows device we're on. Windows 10 Pro. And then we're going to create a new account. We're going to call it admin, admin 9 just for fun, and then the password will be admin9. And we're going to hit create. I'm going to reboot once again. All right, so after rebooting, we now see that there is a user account called admin9. Now we're going to type in admin9 because that's the password that I set it to in 4winkey and it's going to give us a Windows install prompt. It's almost as if I installed a completely new version of Windows except I'm going to be set into the desktop of my Microsoft account. So we get to change all the privacy things. I do recommend turning all of this off because Microsoft does not need to know about you. Now, all this is default. It looks like we just have a new user. Uh, we even have the weather and data and we can see that the air quality in my area is horrible. Uh, shout out to the West Coast NorCal fires. Um, but the thing is, we're an admin account, so we can do things like look at other accounts' data. So we can go to this PC, we can go to local disk, we can go to users, we can go to my user, continue. And after a while, it's just going to let us in. All right, so now that we're in, 
we have access to all of the hidden files and then also we have my hashcat files we have my desktop my downloads you can see uh, I downloaded four win key and some other stuff whatever the heck all this stuff is um, this is kind of scary and I'm gonna sign back into my account just so we can uh, have the better quality all right so this is a little scary Windows account and passwords already didn't do a whole lot because if you signed in with another version of Windows or with a bootable Linux USB, uh, you could see all of the files if they weren't encrypted, uh, just with a another operating system. Um, this is how things like OFCrack would crack local admin passwords and local user passwords, but with the invention of Microsoft accounts, you could no longer crack the password because the hashes weren't kept there anymore. Um, I'm not entirely sure how 4WinKey is changing the passwords and creating new accounts. I know it's based on a version of Linux and they're doing something in the background. If you guys have any ideas, feel free to put them down in the comments section. I'm sure people will be very thankful, including me. Um, but there's a super easy workaround and it's BitLocker. I know I made a video about hacking and cracking BitLocker encrypted drives uh, not that long ago actually. It's actually my most viewed video. It's at like 80,000 views right now. Um, but cracking BitLocker encryption is very difficult, takes a very long time, and in most cases is damn near impossible. So especially with a TPM chip, and with Windows 11 requiring TPM 2.0, I see that Windows 11 and BitLocker are going to be a lot stronger in the future. So if you want to keep your files safe from tools like FormanKey, encrypt your drives with BitLocker and use a strong password. But also make sure to keep record of that password, print it out, put it in a safe, or save it to your Microsoft account because your actual Microsoft account and password is relatively safe. It's just your Windows one. Um, but if people don't have access to your computer and you don't have anything on your computer that is personal, uh, say you just use it for gaming or for work, um, don't worry too much. You are not going to be the victim of a PassFab win for key attack. Um, this product is obviously marketed towards recovery, and that's what this video is about, because YouTube does not enjoy hacking content. That's why I didn't have a video last week. But obviously, this does have applications in penetration testing and in hacking. So if you are a penetration tester working in an enterprise environment, maybe pick up PassFab WinforKey and just put it in your tool belt and just see if their domain handles local admin accounts the way they should or see that um, their BIOS is locked down on all of their enterprise systems. So this is just a good lesson in keeping everything safe and why we have the security measures that we do, including TPM, BitLocker, and BIOS passwords. So if you guys like this video, hit like, get subscribed, Hit that bell icon so you guys get notified by my future videos. And maybe check out PassFab Win for Key. I don't know. It's it's a cool set of program. Uh, it has its applications, but if you didn't lose your Windows password recently, then you probably don't need it. But if you are here because you lost your Windows password, this is probably one of the easiest ways to recover your Windows password on your PC. So. I'll see you guys all later.